All right, let's get started. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us on a Wednesday night. Uh, welcome from the East Coast, the Midwest, and the West Coast. Um, tonight, we are going to talk about U.S. rolling pathways, and more specifically, we're going to talk about the evolution of YDC and what and why we uh, find ourselves in this situation. Um, I think my computer, did I freeze? All right. Okay, so the agenda for tonight is to talk about, to review the pathway system, how it works, where we're at in the system right now, in the process. We're here to meet the coaches. We'll talk about some new exciting program details for YDC, and we'll take questions at the end. So if you have questions and you're afraid you're going to forget them, then please put them in the Q&A at the bottom of the screen there. And when we get through all of the material, then we'll start taking some questions and answers. Uh, just so you know, this is being recorded. And so we'll have the link up as soon as possible uh, on the website and also on the YDC page of the website. So we'll be able to uh, take your questions um, and get some answers for people who aren't here. First things first, uh, my name is Chris Chase, and I've been doing camps now, uh, pseudo US run camps back to 2000, 2001. And um, more importantly, when we started doing the ODP system, which has morphed into uh, the pathway system about 2015. Uh, with me is Stephanie Fryer. Stephanie is the uh, Learning and Development Associate for U.S. Rowing. She has a, a tremendous background in athletics. She is, among other things, a former international athlete in both pole vaulting and shooting, uh, a gymnast in her earlier days, and has a master's in sports performance and a master's in clinical mental health and a doctorate in sports uh, psychology. So you must be like 110 years old to get all those degrees. Um, that's amazing. Um, so Stephanie, why don't you start us off tonight? Yep, so I'm gonna do a quick overview of our pathway systems. I know that most of you guys, since you're here, you're pretty familiar with our application process and all of the camps that we have on offer, but just to review them really quickly and give you better insight into really how many spaces we have at each camp. Um, we So this is just an, a quick overview. You guys are all familiar. So Selection Camp is our latest camp in the year. It's also our smallest camp. We have 30 slots per gender. That's our athletes that are gonna be selected to Junior Worlds and Canamex. Our selection development camp is a little bit bigger. That's in June and July in Chula, Chula Vista. Um, we have spots for 40 rowers and five coxswains per gender at that camp. And then youth development camp, which is what we're focusing on tonight. Um, that's divided by gender. So there's two weeks in June for the girls, two weeks in July for the boys. Um, and it's our largest camp. So we have spots for 115 rowers and 10 coxswains per gender at each of those camps. And then um, when we talk about what we're looking for in athletes and trying to fit you into the camp that's best for you, there's a lot of different factors that we're considering. Um, of course, we're looking at the athlete metrics and I think this is the easiest one for everybody to focus on. Uh, because 2K scores are just, they're really objective, they're easy to compare by the athletes, but it's important to remember that a fast 2K score does not also always equal being fast on the water. And so as we're going to go into a little bit more tonight, there's a lot of different things that our coaches are considering when they look at what is the best camp for you. Um, those include, you know, all of the athlete, athlete metrics that you put in your athlete profile, your rowing experience, like how long have you been rowing? Um, and then your race results as well as coach feedback. Um, and then to give you an idea of where we are in the process. Um, so invitations to all three camps are ongoing. You guys have gotten lots of emails from me about all of that. Um, for SDC in particular, since those are the ones I'm doing myself, we're in round two of those SDC invitations. Just to give you guys an idea, we wait about two weeks after each round of invitation so that we can give athletes the opportunity to accept their spot or decline it. Um, the coxswain invitations, we got 115 coxswain applications and our selection review committee went really thoroughly through every individual applicant, looking at their recordings and their coach reviews and all of those factors. Um, we just got those results last week. So coxswain invitations are just starting right now. And then as I've mentioned, Chris, you can go ahead one slide. So I've sent this out to you guys in several different emails, but just to highlight these numbers in comparison to those spots in camp that I put on the previous chart. So we've got over 150 boys this year with 2K times under 635, uh, over 120 girls with 2K times under 735. And if you look, we only have about 70 spaces between selection camp and SDC. 
So you can see overall, we just have a much larger application pool than we expected this year, but also an unprecedentedly fast selection uh, pool of applicants this year. Um, so that really is informing what we're here talking about tonight. You can go ahead, Chris. And then, so we've got Eric here. I don't think Caitlin was able to make it just yet, but um, so Eric is our junior national team coach for the men's side, and I'm gonna let him talk a little bit about his perspective on how we're reviewing these applicants and getting you guys fit into the right camp. Good evening. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, yeah, I, 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 I really can't say it better than the previous few slides did. Uh, but, you know, for Caitlin and I and Brett, uh, our perspective is from the 30,000 foot view, really looking down at, at everybody's submissions for their, um, you know, erg scores, race results, everything, the whole picture, and and figuring out what what best fits where you are and and what you might need inside the system in any given summer. That doesn't always mean the you know the the part of the system that you need for your development is the one that uh, initially you think you wanted, but it can be a really good and could be a really beneficial place. Um, and like Stephanie pointed out, I mean, 150 guys under 635 really puts us in a, a position of trying to figure out how to make sure everybody's getting developed at a high level. And um, the continued adaptation of YDC and what it brings to the table uh, with small boats and the coaches that are populating the launches, I mean, is arguably, uh, <laughs> you know, a, a, a better collection of coaches and knowledge than we may even have at selection camp. And um, and being able to attend there and and really work through the progress of yourself in the system can go a really long way. So, you know, I encourage, and I know Caitlin encourages uh, from our end that um, always try and keep your doors open and, and you can always grow your community and make your room bigger that way and attending YDC and getting to know those coaches and getting to know the system and getting onto those spreadsheets and into that information can only help you keep future doors wide open. So thank you, Stephanie. All right. So, you know, given the numbers and given the unprecedented nature of, of the quantity of, of awesome athletes and, you know, how deep their talent pool goes, uh, we found ourselves in a situation where we had to create something new. We had to we had to evolve to I mean, we, it's a great problem to have. Right. Our country has so many fast kids and uh, fitting with our ADM model. We want to find a way to challenge the athletes appropriately at the, at the level that they are currently at so that they can improve and step up. Uh, what we did for this year was we decided um, where we had space was in Chattanooga. And we have a camp there already. We have food, housing, and boats and launches, and we have phenomenal coaches. We have several Olympians that are down there helping out to develop our uh, young athletes. And who knows better what it takes to get to the Olympic level than the Olympic athlete. And so we bring them on board, and um, and the space that we're carving out at YDC is um, is going to be overseen by Sean and Megan McCourt. So Sean, would you? Please introduce yourself to the group, uh, to everybody that's here tonight, and say a little bit about yourself and um, Megan. Sure, sure. Uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, welcome everyone to our little chat tonight. Um, I'm Sean. My wife, my wife Megan, uh, was unable to join us tonight, but um, we've been working with U.S. Rowing um, in this form format, the ODP format, going back to 2018. Uh, so we've definitely seen a couple evolutions, uh, and this one is just the next part, and we're really excited for it. Um, Megan herself came up through the U.S. rowing system, started out as a high school rower at Los Gatos, then went to Berkeley, um, and then on to the women's team. Um, I started myself at St. Joe's Prep in Philadelphia and then Boston University, Um I'm an educator by trade, so I really like working with kids and the development process and watching these guys and girls start out as uh, developmental athletes and watching them climb up the following year into selection and 
eventually on to Eric's program. So um, that's the goal of what we're trying to do here. Just keep moving people up uh, the ladder. All right. Thanks, Sean. Um, so what what are we talking about then? What we're talking about is an evolution in the system that grows a new space, creates a new space where we can challenge appropriately. We keep talking about challenging appropriately. And what does that mean? The goal is to to meet you where you're at right now and give you a space that that helps you improve. It helps you get better to where where you want to be. Um, and at this particular point, it's going to be through small boats at this layer. So what we've done is we've carved out a space in Chattanooga for the top 24 athletes that were just on the cusp of making SDC but didn't. And going back to what something that Stephanie said earlier is we are limited in, in um, logistics of how many we can have at each of the camps. And so where we're at now is looking at that space of kids beneath 635 and 735 for the women. Um, we are going to take the 24 best, next best for men and women and bring them to Chattanooga. And we're going to work in, in small boats and they're going to be coached uh, it's in several different ways um, to help them improve. So we're going to work mainly in pairs. It's going to be a pairs camp. And what we're going to try to do is create an atmosphere that allows you to, to really improve on your boat moving skills in, in a very small and, and, and challenging boat. We're also going to have a mental performance module that we are, we are offering. And Stephanie's going to, Dr. Fryer is going to be giving that um, she's going to do that out in Chula Vista for SDC, and then she's going to come to Chattanooga and also give that for the men's and the women's camp about mental performance, which is what her doctorate it, it lends itself to. Additionally, we're going to increase the athlete toolkit by adding on nutrition, things like nutrition, lifting, there's lifting instructing there. Um, and then you're about to meet two of the coaches that are going to be there, and they're going to add to the athlete toolkit too, and what it takes to to keep moving up because what you have to understand is at some point your urge score is only so good right you're going to start getting beaten by people who can move a boat whether they have your urge score or not so what we like to do now is introduce you to uh, our two uh, olympians who will be coaching the men's and women's small boats camp at uh, ydc so amanda would you jump on here and, and um, introduce yourself and let everybody know what you're bringing to the table for this Absolutely. Thanks so much, Chris. And hey, everyone. I'm um, glad you're hopping on here. This is a really new and very exciting thing for me um, to be a part of. Uh, so just a little bit of background about myself. I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I started in high school at Oakland Catholic and went to the University of Notre Dame and was started in the national pool at the junior national level. And at that time, I didn't even know there was such a thing as this whole national team and Olympic system. So for me to now be a part of it is surreal. Um, but basically from Notre Dame, I continued on to the national team and Olympic team. And I would say that I'm a great example in what Chris just mentioned and that Urge scores are awesome and it's very exciting time to have such fast urge scores, but we have to make sure that we're actually moving a boat. In 2012, uh, I was the second fastest woman on the women's team with a 633. And after being tested in the eights, in the pair and in the quad, I was the alternate in London which was a very bittersweet moment for me that obviously was not my goal and what I wanted. And it was hard for me to wrap my finger around that. So in doing so, this is a great project for me to really give you all like a heads up or an earlier start than anticipated in this exact uh, instance of coaching you with one-on-one -on -one your different sides in the pairs, which really help you. It's the best tool um, overall to to really figure out if you're moving a boat or if you're moving just water. Mike, would you like to jump in and uh, and add? Yeah, of course. And so obviously Amanda's going to be uh, working uh, with some some girls as well as, you know, I will help you out. But with the boys side, it's, uh, you know, I had a similar experience that Amanda did. Um, I started rowing in high school as well. A uh, very small team, Minnesota Boat Club in Minnesota. Not a lot of people actually. It was just literally me and my twin brother. 
you had a successful career. We both were invited into junior national team stuff, but you know, back in the late nineties, early two thousands, uh, it was a much different system than it is now. It's not a very good ID system. So it's kind of, once again, interesting to see how things are run now, how much more organized it is, how much, uh, more attention is paid to selection as opposed to previous regimes, but also uh, had a successful career at Wisconsin. Um, rode there for four years. We had a lot of successful boats, a lot of successful rowers, um, other Olympians, in fact, that have made teams and national teams from that, that group. And um, after being done with a major AIDS program, I was a terrible rower. I'm not going to lie. I had a successful career, but I also pulled really hard. That's all I really did was just pull really hard. So I, you know, with the coaching, my scores, I could have gone up to the camp, but I decided to go to Penny C, uh, Pennsylvania Athletic Club in Philadelphia. And I was able to kind of develop my pair skills, my sewing skills, all the kind of skills I needed to get better feel for the water. And it helped because you had to live and die by the pair in the selection regattas and that kind of stuff. So it really did help to spend years just rowing in pairs to eventually making up to the camp, making up into the eight in 2008, which... Uh, I believe is the last men's eight to get a medal, um, but we got bronze and was athlete of the year. I think a lot of that ha ha helped with learning boat feel. I think the other thing that's also important is that um, the camp that like we're providing for this um, top 24, you know, it's, it's, it's intense, but the whole why, why do you see thing camp will be intense in general for everyone. I think for us, it's, we're going to give a chance to show what we know, but also show like the things, the tools you need for boat feel, because two weeks is not a lot of time to really kind of get the pair down, but hopefully we'll get you enough in an athlete toolkit or um, awareness, body awareness, boat feel awareness, um, that it will help you as you move on to other like ventures in your career, whether it's rowing for your team in high school, rowing in college, and potentially a national team. That's the goal. Thank you both for that. All right. So, what are the next steps? All right. Where so where we're at? We we know what we're we're offering here. We know what the space that we're carving out down in Chattanooga is this um, uh, uh, level of y YDC that is going to be based in the pair in learning the things that that Micah and Amanda are talking about, whether it be boat feel or body awareness, or, you know, Amanda, you and I were even talking last night of just what it takes, right? What it takes not only individually, but what it takes to, as a teammate um, to navigate the space where you need to make every, everybody else around you needs to be faster too, for you to get faster. So this is, there's kind of a synergy here. Um, so uh, Steph, do you want to jump in? And um, you know, what's, so most of you are getting emails from Stephanie. And when you're writing people, you're writing Stephanie back. So, um, you know, just wanted to put the name to the face. So, Stephanie, what, you want to jump in and, and tell everybody where we're at right now and what to expect, what's coming next? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, as I mentioned before, our camp invitations are ongoing. Um, so, moving forward, we would encourage you, if you are interested in participating in our U.S. rowing camp system this summer, please accept your invitation. Um, but also know that just a verbal acceptance doesn't actually hold your spot in camp. Um, so the, actually paying your deposit is the only thing that holds your spot in camp. We also do have that scholarship opportunity. So if you haven't gotten emails about that yet, um, please reach out to me. Uh, my email is going to be posted up here at the end if you guys don't have it in your inbox already. Um, so and, and also if you have accepted your spot and you don't know how to pay your deposit or you're confused about that process, please reach out to me and I can assist you with it and help you along that way. I will say um, it is definitely possible for athletes to move up from YDC to SDC. Um, we've already done it with a few athletes this year. Um, as, as athletes improve and as we have space in SDC, we will definitely facilitate that. But know that we are only going to be pulling up athletes from uh, that have accepted and paid their spot in YDC up to SDC. Because if you don't accept your spot and don't pay, then we're our assumption, all we can kind of go off is that you aren't interested in participating in camps. So we definitely encourage you to accept your spot. Um, and then also keep your athlete profile up to date. Um, if you do have a like a, a big PR in your 2K, I would also encourage you to email me and let me know. Um, we have almost 4,000 athlete profiles. So it is definitely possible for me to miss that updated 2K time. So please reach out to me and, and let me know so I can make sure that the appropriate coaches are notified. Um, and Chris, if you go to the next slide, it'll just give you guys an overview. Hopefully you guys all 
know how to update your athlete profile at this point. Um, also, if you have any issues with it, let me know and I can help. Um, but yeah, I think that's all we have. Um, I did not see any questions come through in the chat. There are six questions in the oh. Q&A. So let's have a okay. look at some of them. I don't know if you can see, I don't know if everybody's seeing my screen. Um, yeah. Have you extended invites to the top 24 rowers yet? Is everyone on this call invited? Um, everybody on this call. So let's start with that. We this, this email invitation went out to everybody who's in the range. So everybody who is in the range who hasn't been invited somewhere to uh, selection camp, everybody else who's in the range got this email. And, and no, at this point, we have not yet selected the 24 uh, boys and girls that are going to be in the part of this camp. So let's see here. Is it too late for rowers to apply? It is not. You can go in and um, apply. You can go in. You can make sure that you're getting your profile up to date. And I can't can't stress how important that is because we don't know if you've had a major piece or a breakthrough. We don't know, you know, the things that you've done to improve yourself. So you need to help us. There's thousands of you and three of us. So you need to help us by getting your profiles up to date. So uh, the answer is no, it is not too late to, to apply. So if you are going to, I would get that in. Um, uh, let me, can I add on to that really quick? Yes, Chris? please. Yep. If you're a brand new applicant and you haven't applied yet, can you also just send me an email and let me know? Because I, if I could convey how many spreadsheets I have, um, just just giving me a heads up if you're a brand new applicant would be really helpful. All right. Um, if you're slower than 735, what are the chances of getting into YDC? Uh, everything's relative to the amount of people that actually apply for the camps and then also accept the invitations. So if you're slower than 735, I would say that based on the last five or six years that the chances are still pretty good, uh, but it's all relative to how much slower or how far away from the standard you are. With every year, what we're seeing is, it, is the standard gets higher. The uh, American rowing improves. More and more kids are finding better coaching, finding better um, training methodology across the country. And we're seeing more and more people who, who are setting their sights higher. Um, so, um, I would say that you're not out of luck, but with every year, it, it probably is going to, we're probably going to get better and better athletes every year. But I would apply. If you're interested, you should apply and wait and see what happens, uh, you know, how would relative to everybody else. Will it be a separate invitation for the YDC top 24 select? Steph, would you like to uh, answer that? Um. I, I feel like this is a Sean answer, but I would say, as far as I know, no, there's not going to be a separate invitation, um, and these spots will be decided closer to camp. Am I right, right in that, Sean? Yeah, I mean, we, we've we started already sending some of them out to people, um, some, of the, some of the people who are on our list first. So, I mean, what we're going to do is, just like any other spot on the camp, we're going to do them on a rolling basis. So, we we would like to get those faster uh candidates for the pan for the pairs camp identified, you know, probably as quickly as possible, since there's only you know 24 spots. Okay. Well, what can I do if my team doesn't 2K or test a lot, but still want to go to camp? Well, you can apply and send in what you what you have accomplished so far. If you want to reach out after the, the call tonight, um, maybe we can see where you're at and, and um, you know, you can work, you should be working with your coach, talk to your coach back home about what can you do to, uh, to, I mean, coaches are great, I think, at helping their athletes individually achieve as well. So you should be talking to your coach about that as well. Um, let's see here. Uh, how can a row find out if they are in the 24 rower group that will work in pairs? Sean, you want to answer this, please? Wait. Yeah, Chris, we could probably um, note that on the application, or not the application, I'm sorry, the invitation. We'll we'll do that for everyone so they know if they're in consideration for the pairs group. Got it. That's great. Thank you. If we were previously offered YDC but declined it, will we be able to be reconsidered? Also, how will we know if YDC offers for the pairs subset? So part of that, Sean, just answered. Uh, Sean, right? We will note that in the um, in the uh, in the uh, um, invitation. At the same time, for this question, I would say if you've declined it right now, in our minds, uh, you've declined it. 
So if it's something that you want to reconsider, I would reach out to to uh, Dr. Fryer and and just say, you know, tell say it as such, right? That you have declined your invitation, but you currently would like to reconsider that because that's the only way we're actually going to know um, if you and let you have to specifically tell us that. I would say, Steph, anything to add to that, or does that cover it? Okay. No, uh, yeah, I think that's good. Do you have to know how to row in small boats before camp? The answer is no. And um, I would say, I mean, will it, would it help? Sure. Uh, at the same time, I think that most Americans row in eights. And one of the things that that the pathway system is trying to do is ever increasingly, you know, if you watch the Europeans row or the Australians in New Zealand, a lot of those athletes are learning at a younger age to row in small boats. And I think we all know what the result is, right? Or we can also watch the Olympics and we can all see the Europeans that are rowing in colleges they have a better sense of the water than we do. And so that is why our system is working on developing you all in a way that gives you the same advantages that they have. So do you have to, to row uh, coming into camp? No, the purpose of the camp is to create and help you create some of those skills. What is the deadline for payment for the YDC camp? Steph? Yeah, so uh, the deadline for the deposit should be technically uh, 10 days after your invitation with that. We've been as flexible as we can with that. And then the deadline for the dues is May 15th. Okay. If you have not received an invitation yet, are we still in the running? Absolutely. We have not filled the camp. Uh, we still have, uh, I want to say, just under, uh, what do we have, about 100 seats left for YDC total in the camp, um, give or take? Uh, oh, way, way less than that. Um... Way less than that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I think the boys, not counting the not counting the the parish camp, but um, I think boys are right around twenty five seats out of one hundred and fifteen, um, okay. and girls are about the same. Not counting the pairs. Boy, I, I tell you, it's happening fast, which, which right? is actually a lot higher than last year. Okay. Where we were um, at this point last year. Yeah, it is happening fast. It's a roll. So it's a rolling invite. So every day it's changing and spots are being. Um, wow, we have 41 questions. Did you all say that? Um, could you speak to the not 24? Sean, let's give an overview of YDC in general for the for the camp for every, you know, for everybody, for the everybody who's coming to YDC. Um, sure, sure. Even if they're not in the top 24 for the Paris camp, let's give an overview, please. Sure. So the great thing about YDC is, you know, we do have uh, probably about three subgroups in there. So we have the, you know, the pairs group. We're going to have um, a group of, of, you know, probably sophomore, junior, second year rower type uh, group. Like, I guess what would typically fall into a varsity or a JB type group. And then we're going to have a group of, of younger guys who are just starting out. Um, so we're going to group everyone by ability and skill set, and then try to meet them where they are and coach them up from there. And if, if you guys have direct questions, I'm going to drop my information in the chat and Megan's information. Um, so you, you can contact us directly too. If Maybe Chris, if you want to flip to the next slide flip to the next slide it has emails that people can write down as well there great you go. um and, and and to to also to sean's point sean has uh just about every kind of boat you can find at uh, in chula vista or um, i'm sorry in chattanooga so everybody in the ydc camp will get a wide range um for the, for the level not the 24 will be but we'll get a chance to row in all size boats so they will be able to gain skills whether it be in the quad the, you know, um, whether the eight uh, small boats and so on. So you will have a little bit of everything that you will be learning in those boats as well. Um, if my son was invited to YDC, politely declined, I think we already answered this. If you have already declined, but you would like to be back in, please do send that along to Stephanie and let us know of the interest. Do I have to fill out the metrics on the athlete's profile? Do we have to? Yes, you do. Um, that is something that we have in, in there on purpose, and we would like everybody to fill that out. Are the dates the same? The dates are still the same. The, uh, there will be a one-two-week camp, 
and then there'll be a second one that follows it for the guys. So there would be the girls and the guys. Is this correct, Sean? Oh, I'm sorry. I was typing the response. What oh, was that? Right. The, the, uh, the, the girls camp goes first and the guys can't follow, correct? Correct. Yep. All right. Is there, um, are the dates the same? Yes, they are. Uh, is there any way to upload video to show? Uh, uh, Stephanie, you want to? I, I don't think so, but you can always email it to us. The next one's for you as well, Stephanie. For athletes who attended U19 ID camps, where their athlete profiles updated to test score uh, with the test scores from those camp tests. I really, really, really wish it had automatically updated, but no, uh, hopefully next year. Um, but yeah, the athlete don't need to do that. And if for some reason you don't remember your ID camp results, reach out to me and we can look them up for you so you can fill them out. When will the invites for the top 24 rowers be sent? We're sending some of yep. them out now. Um, they're just going to roll off, you know, the, the guys on our guys and girls on our list. Um, some of these have already been answered. Uh, how have all the spots for YDBC been filled? Nope. Um, how many spots are left? I think we said about 25 of each. Uh, so if you're interested, we should get in there. Do results of regionals and nationals feed into selection decisions? Uh, since those are still months ahead of us, uh, by then we'll probably already have filled camp. So regional and nationals results that are upcoming, by that point, um, probably won't. It depends on what you mean by selection uh, uh, for this question here. Um, you know, if... If you are somebody who has is consistently improving and has metrics to show, uh, that will be taken into into consideration as we move people around. We already have moved people up from YDC into SDC, so that is something that that does happen. Um, if you have not been invited to SDC but you want to be part of, of selection camp and hope to be there, do you also need to have uh, accepted to the SDC invite? Um, if we move people up. So this, I don't know, um, there's a question here, Steph, and I'm not sure how I read this. We do have built into SDC this year. If you go to SDC and you are just at a higher, at a higher level that you're, you know, you are, um, there's a space, an avenue for us to move you into selection camp from SDC. One follows the other, just so we're on the same page here, whoever, this was an anonymous question. Um, when SDC ends, Eric and Caitlin and Brett have the option of inviting kids to stay for selection camp. That's that's built into the way the system was created this year. Uh, this question says, do we but want to be part of selection camp and hope to be there, do you also need to have been accepted to have accepted the SDC invite? Yeah, I mean, I think what you're speaking to is like there are spots, and we're talking just like just a, like one to two spots per gender Correct. that could move up from, and those will really be, Eric, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but those will be athletes that are currently attending SDC and we see potential and we would literally pull them up from that and and they would stay on for selection camp. It's not a, um, it, it's kind of the same process. If you don't attend SDC, then that opportunity is not an option. Right. You have to, you have to have selected, you have to have um, accepted the, and, and almost every year back to 2017 that I can remember, we have had to move somebody up from selection development to uh, to selection camp for a variety of reasons, from broken legs to COVID and so on. Um, so yes, uh, how many of, uh, spots we've already answered this one? What can we do to help our rower our rower qualify for the top twenty four? Well, you know, as we as we look back on the slides, there are a lot of of parts that go into the decision making from the metrics alone, but also results. Um, the coaches review of the athlete and, and sent that in as a as a reference. Um, all the, the total athlete is what we look at. And I think communicating is also something that's important. So you you have Sean's, uh, you have Sean, Megan, you have um, Amanda and Micah's information here. You also have the head coaches of the junior team for the men and the women, which are Caitlin and Eric. Uh, you can reach out with questions. Um, I think that communication is key if you're looking. At some point, though, the athlete is or is not at the level for each of these camp levels, right? And so we want to make sure that your athlete or you as the athlete are challenged appropriately for where you're at. 
We have not received any invitation yet. It may be. Um, each of the, as you go up the ladder in the junior pathway system, uh, the camps get smaller, right? And so the number of seats that are available, it, it gets more complicated to making it for the number of people applying. Uh, if you haven't received an invitation yet, it may be because you applied for SDC, as you say. Um, but, uh, and yeah, Brett, Brett is reminding me that U23 gets even smaller than that. So, um, uh, it's for this question right now, if you haven't received a, an invitation yet, it doesn't mean you're not going to. Uh, the applications are, are are coming in and the uh, the invitations are rolling, right? So it is a constant movement. And we constantly are also seeing people making incredible changes. Um, I'm reminded of a, of a person who had done a 2K last year and was like in the 650s and then overnight went into the 620s. And you're like, wow, you just jumped a lot of, a lot of levels all at once. So I would not... Uh, count out if you haven't received it yet. It could be on the way. But again, communicate to you. We've now put out all the information for the people that are in charge of each of the levels. You can reach out and find out. Is it a total of 24 boys and girls or 24 of each gender? The answer to that is each gender. Let's see here. Well, camp attendees outside of the 24 have a chance to compete in small? Com yes. So Sebastian, your question is, will, the, will, will people at YDC also be in small boats? The answer is yes. If I initially decline, can I change my mind and accept? That is up for you to reach out to uh, Stephanie Fryer and to make sure that, um, that you are articulating that if that is something that you would like to do. How many athletes were invited to this call uh, versus YDC in general? Um, Let's see here. I think we had on this uh, 175 people tonight. Uh, remember that the that this went out to not only the athletes but their parents. So you could have any combination of of athletes and you know each of their parents on here as well. So I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it went to people who would have qualified or were in that group that we were referring to earlier. And I'll also add that. The information about this webinar also went out to an all membership email as well. So just just so you know that there were other people outside our targeted email. Uh, let's see here. When do you think all the scholarship will be sent out? Steph, do you want to make any um, updates on the Scott where we're at with scholarship? That was rolling as well. Yeah, scholarships are rolling. They started a couple weeks ago. I know that we still have some scholarships available in each camp, but it's it's getting smaller. So um, you should hear an answer if you're going to get a scholarship within the next, I would say, week or two is, is our hope. Um, for the next one, that's how can you change part of your application, like an improvement in times? That's just reaching out to us and let us know. You, you can update your athlete profile, but like I said before, when you do that, just, just let me know so that I'm sure I see it. Yeah, you. I, that's probably a two-parter, right? You should fill out your profile and get it up to date and also reach out to, um, to Stephanie. Let's see here. Is there, uh, how would we know if we made the top 24? So that was going to be, I think, um, I think a lot of these questions were probably asked when we had answered some before. Uh, Sean, you had mentioned that you will, when the invites we'll, are going we'll out. start updating the invites. And anyone who we've invited already who hasn't, We'll we'll contact them directly and just so they know where they're being placed. Is there a day when you hope to have everything finalized? Uh, the reality is, is I mean, it's going to, that day's going to come. I don't know if there will be an exact day when the slots are gone. They're gone, and so I, it's actually happening fairly fast now. Uh, we are ahead of where we've been in years past because of the you know the pathway system has endeavored to have a much more communication and webinars and getting information out. So we're getting people in faster. Um, it's it's important for all the levels of camp to get the information they need because there's an awful lot of planning that goes in to setting up those sites to be ready for the camps in the summer. So uh, sooner the better, but we also want the right athletes, right? Uh, when will more information about the camp be sent to athletes who have registered and paid for a deposit? Uh, that'll vary by the camps. Um, you know, some of the some of the selection information or the Canamex information is being created. Um, 
you know, the details about Mexico City for Canamex, for instance. Uh, we are gathering the information as we get it. So that'll go out at a different time. When SDC fills, we have a packet ready to go, a welcome packet for everybody. Yeah, people will start getting that. And uh, the same with, um, with YDC. Can you review the YDC dates? Sean, you want to? Uh, why do you see sure. dates? That's a good question. I should know this like the back of my head, but I always have to look them up. So give me one second. Move on to another question. I'll circle back around. Okay, so I'll answer sure the I next one. Confirm that. Uh, does not attending a U.S. Uh, U.S. rowing camp this year hurt your chances of going next year if we apply again? It it will not be held against you if you don't go to a camp this year. Um, and so every year we're looking for the best athletes, the appropriate athletes at each level so that we can set up a system that challenges them and helps them improve. So if, if you're not able for whatever reason to go to a camp this year, it will not be held against you for next year. And we'll have the, the two have no bearing, but next year you'll still have to beat out everybody to get the camp of your choice. Just if, uh, if you declined YDC, but you may be interested in the top 24, will you contact them if they're sub 635? Uh, what you should do is if you have declined, but you are interested in that top 24, you should be reaching out to Stephanie and the McCourts about your chances of getting into the top 24. We won't come to you. There's just so there's just way too many people. And as I said earlier, if you are on the decline list, that's probably not where we're going to be looking. So you'll have to make yourself known. What is the average age of uh, youth development camp, YDC camp participants? Sean, years past, what would you say your guess of average age is? Um, I mean, I would guess like mainly juniors, seniors, um, with the average being like sophomore. Or so what's that? 17, 18? Guess uh, no, I, I think for SDC, uh, the average age is like 17 was last year. And I think your camp was closer to 16 off the top of my okay. head. I think you, you had yeah, a lot I mean, more sophomores That's, than that's not a day of the point that we usually pull. Um, so that's just me shooting from the hip. Do the one minute and a hundred max plan uh, into selection from ID camps? Yes, they do. Those are, uh, Caitlin and Eric spent, have spent an enormous amount of time going through all the metrics of all the athletes. And yes, they do play a role along with the other metrics as well. What is the last day where you might upgrade a rower to SDC from YDC? Well, I mean, this we, is, what's that? last year it happened in May, right before camp, because someone got injured. So, I mean, I think whenever the need arises, we'll we'll fill that need. Yeah, we, um, you know, I remember two years ago, we had something happen out at uh, Chula Vista, and we had immediately sent somebody in the first day of camp. Um, and by the way, if if we are asking you, for instance, if if we wanted to pull somebody up, this happened, this happened recently we would pay for the plane ticket to send your athlete, assuming that you approved the, I'm talking to the parents, of course, uh, where if your athlete was going to get pulled up, we would make that happen, assuming that you were agreeable to that. To get an invitation Chris, to the subgroup, do you if, say it again? If you need them, sorry. Um, go ahead. Dates. Oh, okay. Girls camp, um, June 16th through um, June 29th. And the boys' camp is June thirtieth through July thirteenth. Okay, hope that helps. And this is all in print as well; should be on the website. Uh, to get an invitation to the subgroup, do you need to already have accepted the YDC invitation? So, what's going to happen is Sean is going to reach out to anybody who has already accepted. If they are appropriate for the subgroup, then he will inform them. Uh, from here moving forward, if you are being invited to the subgroup, it, that will be known in the invitation. Am I saying that correctly, Sean, for you? Yes, correct. Okay. If we have already denied the invitation, so I think we've already covered this. If you have denied the invitation already, it is up to you to reach out to the camp directors and Stephanie to get yourself back in the mix if that is something you want to do. Is this aimed at 2007 born kids or should we wait until next year? Uh, I would say if, if that you are appropriate 
at, at a skill level that's appropriate to be at camp. We're not looking for any particular age group. Uh, we're not also not looking to get, you know, 12. The youngest kids we've ever had are 14. Um, and we did, we haven't had many of them. So uh, there are a lot of, of factors that go into being at a, a camp for a couple of weeks. And, but we don't have a, an, uh, an age, anything that's age specific. After the top 24, the YDCs select, am I right that there are 206 additional regular uh, spaces? So the max of camps uh, of YDC for either gender is 125 or so kids. Um, and that would be up to Sean and Megan if they can add a few more. But what we're looking at is what it says, you know, 48. So there's 202, give or take, right? Um, we can have a few more, but that's only that's up to Sean and Megan to decide to determine with their housing, with Macaulay School and, and so on, uh, what they can fit. You, uh, Donovan, you could reach out to, to Sean McCord and ask him that specifically if there's extra spaces. How many athletes were invited? Oh, we already did this one. And my um, info's in the chat. So when should Coxons anticipate? So Coxons, as Stephanie said earlier, uh, we uh, we created a, a system of of um, evaluating the Coxons, and it had many factors to it. And the our our national team Coxons helped generate the rubric that we utilize to grade and rank the Coxons. It just came through. The 115 or so Coxons just came through. And uh, you should be hearing uh, sooner than later, we should be getting those out. We should, we're, we're already starting to get those out now that we have the ranking. Our application is in, but we have not sent in deposits since we are waiting to hear about scholarship award. So, um, okay, that's fair enough. When can we expect to know? I think we answered this earlier about scholarship, uh, Stephanie, that we're nearing the end of it. Um, Chris, uh, we're, we had, and, uh, and we are holding until the scholarships go out, like we're holding spots for people, um, you know. Like we're not turn, we're not taking away a spot if you're waiting for a scholarship. Is it possible yeah. for Coxons to update their recordings, similarly uh, to how wrote? Um, if you have, well, this is a, this is a good question. I, yeah, I think. Well, we're I would point. just say that this. The Coxon Selection Committee is already done, so I don't think you can update your recording for right now for this year's invitations. Um, yeah, just because I know the Selection Committee has already finished their work. Do you know when invitations will stop being extended? Uh, well, they, you know, we're getting closer and closer to filling all the camps. So uh, when there's no more room, there will we will we will stop sending out invitations. Will YDC campers again be given blankets, sheets, towels, and pillow, or do they need to bring their own? Sean? Yeah, what we did last year, um, I, I would say plan on bringing your own. Um, what we did, I know with the guys, that there were a lot of girls who came and used their sheets and uh, wanted to leave them. So we, we had them professionally washed. And anyone who needed sheets could, you know, was fr was free to take from that pile. Um, so chances are that will be available again. But I always tell people just if you need it, plan on bringing it. Oh, here's a question. If you and a team member, member are both accepted into the top 24 pair program, would there be a higher chance of being paired together? We will make zero promises on this question. Uh, the coaches will determine who rows with whom and make the lineups on a day-to-day -day basis. So there will be no promises here of any of that business. At YDC, are you really only on the water for two hours per day as the website, as per the website overview? There's two practices a day, correct? So two practices around two hours each, I would say. Um, I don't think our website says you're only on for two hours. That should be two practices. We can we can go back and check that out later on and make sure that that's not misrepresenting it. Uh, I'm curious what the two K average is. Not a clue. Um, but as we laid out before, with 150 boys under 635, you know the answer to this question is basically based on who accepts, right? And then you know I can tell you last year that uh, at SDC last year, the average 
the average 2K was like 726 or something like that. But I for for YDC, we were talking about 100 and something kids for the boy, each boys and girls. And, and you're talking um, about different skill in. levels even within those camps. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. How late will athletes be notified of YDC? Not 24. May, June. It'll be before May. I mean, it'll be before uh, before June for sure. Um, we still have uh, 20 days left in this month. Um, so, I mean, we're running out of spots uh, at a fairly quick rate now. So we, how late will be they be notified until the last seat is done and uh, the last spot at camp is gone, which I would imagine will happen in at the latest early, early May would be my guess. Are all spots in SDC filled? At as this moment of this webinar, no. Um, are there invite invites out right now? And as Stephanie said earlier, we generally give you about two weeks, you know, or less to make up your decision before we start inviting. We assume that you don't want it and we start inviting somebody else if we haven't heard back from you. All right. For the top 24, would any of them include any rowers that have already been invited to other camps? Uh, if they've already been invited to selection camp, which means the Junior Worlds squad or uh, Canamex or SDC, the, the 24 would not include any of those. By selection, I mean camp invitation. This is, uh, I think we answered this earlier, Donovan. What is the youngest age to be invited to YDC? As I said uh, earlier, we generally 14 would be the the youngest person we generally invite. And the caveat to that is we'd like to speak to you and your parents before you come, before we invite you. We'd like to get a feel for uh, who the athlete is and if they're ready to be, you know, be at camp. So we'd like to know a little bit more about you. Uh, but uh, with 14, we generally have not gone beneath that. I think there's been a very one very rare uh, instance, in, at least in my time. But we um, we have enough athletes to to fill the camp with older kids, and the younger kids will have, still have time left later. How many spots? I have no idea how many spots are left. Uh, everything's been rolling. Um, I know that we have the invites out, and um, you're welcome, Donovan. We have invites out, and it is constantly changing. It's probably during this webinar. The number of spots left has probably changed because people have probably gone and got right on to accept invitations now after going through this. So given the general the, the questions here. Uh, for the new small boat program, then require male rowers to have. So uh, the answer to this question is basically what you're asking is, does it require male rowers to have a sub 635? The answer is so, uh, sub 635 is a standard, but it's not the only thing that we make our choices by. Um, you know, we've had uh, coach recommendations that have been off the charts. We have had, you know, uh, Eric and Caitlin have watched video of kids who don't have the best third score, but are just tremendous rowers. We've seen kids stroking boats that win at nationals that aren't under 640. And we just know that they can make a boat go fast. So when we find athletes like that, we don't restrict their access to camp because they have not broken 635. At the same time, um, it is an important metrics that we use. Everything from colleges on down uh, worldwide, the, the 2K is a metrics that we do use. So, is, Eric, is there anything that you want to add to that answer about, you know, just simply holding to a 2K? Uh, I, I know that we don't. Is there anything that you want to add to when you evaluate or if Caitlin's on here as well? Sure. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, at, at the most ultimate level, the boat speed is is most important. Um and uh, from there, we, you know, there's a lot of ways to kind of measure everyone's capabilities, uh, whether it is they have a limited ERG score, but they move boats very well and they, they, are, they participate a lot deeply into progression regattas, or maybe they're from not as successful a team but they do have the physiological metrics that are worth considering if they can develop over the summer. We always see athletes who might come in the first day of camp at one speed, but they get to work by the time they get to world championships, they're able to compete at a completely different speed. 
just because they've progressed so far over the summer. So there's a, a lot to measure there, but I mean, I will say like, um, as uh, Stephanie pointed out way earlier, like the, the and I, I brought this up among the coaches is athletics is often measured like a, like a, a test is measured on a curve where if the group is getting faster, then the ability to be in the highest portion of that group becomes that much harder. And when you have 150 young men under 635, uh, it pushes the needle forward, which is incredible for the system and for pathways and for the United States. And it, it really does engage us all in, in our commitment to kind of pushing our own envelope. And that's a big a part of also what Caitlin and I like to see is is as we push forward how how are you engaging in that in that push right that 619 is is really no longer able to kind of ring the bell um because we've got athletes annually who come to selection camp at 559 um and uh or or smaller lighter athletes coming to selection camp uh under 620 um at 150 pounds so um just considering what that means and, and where you are in your learning curve, it doesn't mean anyone is is uh, outside of the range um, because we're all very young and developmental. And so if, if you even have the smallest amount of markers, then we, like we said earlier, we definitely encourage you to be involved um, and, and just keep the doors open. Uh, if I could give one last nudge, it's, uh, myself as a coach in OKC now, um, I send my own athletes to YDC. So I, I hope that that shines, that there's no greater endorsement than the fact that I send my own athletes that I work with year round. Uh, and I believe in, in what that camp is able to accomplish for them and their development. So. Thank you, Eric. Will there be any races for the 24? Um, one of the things that we have been uh, working on in this evolution is that we're not sending the athletes to races in the summer. Um, personally, Americans race too much and develop too little. And so um, the this group will not go outside of camp to race. Now, that doesn't mean that Micah and Amanda don't have like a pairs matrix or have some fun, um, challenging, competitive stuff in practice in that two weeks or end we talked a little bit last night of making the tour de france or the tour de chattanooga gold uni for the for the best boat mover in camp but i'll leave that up for to them to create that fun that fun matrix and stuff but there won't be anybody they won't be leaving camp to go anywhere to race it will be if we create what is it steel sharpened steel if we create the right group uh at each of these levels of camp they will push each other to be to be better our race results Chris, from the can I yes can I jump in for a second I want to be mindful of time and I'm seeing a, a bunch of questions at the bottom um that I can answer all at once um there's several questions about deposits um you, you should get a link for a deposit when you get your well so for SDC we send out the deposit link when we send out your invitation for YDC there's one extra step you fill out a google form and then you get your deposit link so if you have received an invitation and you don't have a deposit link let us know um, and then there's a lot of questions of um, both if you haven't gotten an invitation to SDC, but you think you're in that range, um, just so you know, SDC is a camp that gets, that kind of started the process later than the other three camps. So they're just kind of behind the, uh, they're just a little bit slower with application just because of the nature of how we have to wait on, you know, selection camp invitations first to know kind of how athletes are are filling out the camps. Um, so just because you haven't gotten an SDC invitation doesn't mean you're not being considered for any of these camps. And uh, both with scholarships and with uh, camp invitations, our intention is to, if you end up not getting invited to any camp, our intention is to let you know uh, when all, all slots are filled and you don't get an invitation. Um, that being said, it's totally possible for emails to like go into junk mailbox. I have been sending lots of emails. So I've always been worried that my emails are somehow starting to get viewed as spam. So if you, if it's been a long time and you haven't gotten an invitation, don't hesitate to reach out and I can check and see if you should have received one and you just didn't get it because of a mistyped email or, or a spam folder. Um, so please feel free to reach out about that. 
Sean, there was a question about um, the number of coaches at YDC camp. Would you give an answer about the number of coaches that you have for each of the two uh, camps? Sure. There are 15 coaches at each camp. Um, and that coaching staff is comprised of um, Olympians, Olympic medalists, um, Division One college coaches, you know, big name colleges like Harvard, um, smaller uh, D2 and D3 schools um, like Trinity. We have youth club coaches as well as scholastic coaches on the staff. Do you have any information about uh, a certain any coxswains coming to your uh, coaching staff? We do. We do. Um, Caitlin Snyder, Olympic uh, gold medalist. Uh, driver of the women's eight, uh, former driver of the women's eight, will be our coxswain coach. So she'll be here for both uh, the boys and girls camp. Uh, SDC will also have coxswain, uh, coxswain curriculum and a coxswain coach at camp. Um, so I, being mindful of time, we have 24 questions. I think a lot of them are similar. Uh, how late? Well, we already talked about uh, this. How late? Um, previous uh, seasons, race results. Yes, always a factor. All of that that plays into the decision making, uh, which is why it's so important to keep your profile updated with things that you need us to know and want us to know. Uh, can we repeat the information for the twenty four rowers will be released? Uh, some have already been invited, and some will be invited. And Sean has, has said that what he will be doing is and. Any invites from here on out for uh, that portion of the YDC camp, they will be, it'll be indicated in the, it will certainly be indicated in the invitation itself. Um, we already did this one. Some of these seem like they're coming up multiple times. What do I do if I get into the Paris camp or SEC and would need scholarship? Previously not needed. I think you would have to reach out. There is, there is um, a way to reach out and ask that question for Jenny Treas um, to see what's available there. If you, if the question is you're looking for YDC and you're looking for um, scholarship, there is a chance that YDC has scholarship available for you because in house at the camp they also give uh, give some scholarship out. So you have to reach out to Sean McCourt uh, specifically about that. When will you guys know if they're? Uh, when will guys know if they're accepted into SDC? Um, when they get the email uh, that asks them, uh, right now as it's rolling, we are we we invite a certain number of people. We wait for the answers if they accept and if or or decline, and then we move on to it's all ranked, and we move on to the next athletes in line. How do I access my application to change it? At this point, you might want to just write straight to uh, Stephanie. And if you have anything that you can change on your profile, you should do that. But as Stephanie said earlier, you should reach out to her directly if you have any any changes that you would like to add. Will athletes and parents be notified if they do not receive a scholarship? We were told to withhold paying our, our deposit pending our scholarship. Um, I would Last reach year, out. Everyone did receive something. Like What's that? Did re every applicant received um, a letter from Jenny whether or not it was an accept or a decline. Okay. Let's see if my if my low if my two K is lower than the recommended SDC and I haven't been invited into camp, does that mean you're not even being considered? That nope, it does not mean that you're not being considered at all. Um, it is it is a process and the process continues to go through the list as we get acceptances and declines. Steph, what is the date when you no longer get your refund for your deposit? Um, so, oh, I should have looked that up beforehand. I know that for a full refund, it's only within the first 48 hours of putting your deposit down. And then there's a date for getting a partial refund. And I don't remember it off the top of my head, but it should be in the email receipt that you got like once you paid your deposit. I'm pretty sure the refund policy is in there. Um, it, but if you send me an email, I can find you the language to, to give you specifics. Who have, I didn't see who asked that question, but but shoot me an email. Uh, the hey. top 24 athletes, oh, sorry, Sean. Oh, I was gonna jump in on, sorry, the, the question before. It, the person who said if their time is faster than 
the SDC, you know, standard time and they haven't heard from us. If you haven't heard from us at any level, just reach out to one of us because there are thousands of kids in the in, in our databases. So, you know, we are all humans. We just want to make sure that we're not missing anyone either. Are the top 24 still part of the 115 total athletes in YDC? The answer is yes. That doesn't include the Coxons, of course. Uh, what about the kids who are going to Henley? Henley, depending on when you get back from it, is so late in the game that unfortunately you will miss the uh, you will miss any of the camps other than selection camp, which starts on July 10th. Um, and so if you are good enough to be invited to selection camp, then that's that's uh, for you. Otherwise, we don't have anything later than that in in the in the summer. Average 2K for a selection. Oh, geez, I don't know. Uh, what was it? 626 last year for the guys camp. And this year we have guys that are in the teens, um, but we haven't filled the camp. So I, at this point, don't know the answer to that question. How many coaches per athlete? We just answered that. Um, if athletes are not invited to SDC or YDC, will they be notified that they are not invited? Um, we have, you know, as Sean was saying, we have 700 and something applications alone but we also have what 1400 or something on the list of people who who acknowledge in the profile that they want to um, be considered for a camp. Um, I don't think we have a mechanism to single out everybody who hasn't been, Stephanie, uh, but something we can we can certainly look into to see if there's anybody who hasn't. Uh, let's see here. Uh, with spots filled, you will if when the spots are filled we will stop sending invites if we have no more room at any of the levels of camp if me and my sibling both got accepted to ydc would there be a chance we would be roomed together um i, I have so many questions like do you get along i know with my siblings you don't you wouldn't want us to room together um i would say reach out to sean mccourt and Chris, what um, are we doing it not just siblings, but any of those things, we put out a roommate request form. Okay. So if if both applicants or both um, athletes say that, yes, I want to room with the other person, then we match them up. But if one, like, if one sister says, yeah, I definitely want to room with my sister, and the other sister is like, and I want to room with, you know, like a completely different person, then we won't match them up. They both have to have matching uh roommate request forms a uh, question here about times on the water and um also erg uh, i would say that what you should do is apply and with your most updated information and that will be uh you know worked into the process where everybody else is and see where it falls um, but you're definitely within the range i would say uh, and, and giving your on water times for you in a single is actually, it's relative to what, what the conditions were, but it's also good information for the coaches to know. Where would we submit a coach's recommendation? That, uh, Steph, that's already, um, that was part of it, wasn't it? Is it not? I mean, we have a spot for coaches. Um, it's, it's built into the Coxon application, I believe. It's not built into the rower application. Right. Um, but you're also always welcome to email us. Yep. Yeah, you should email the coaches if uh, that comes up. Um, will you know? Yeah, a lot of questions about will you know if you're in the subgroup? Um, and you will know. The answer is uh, that we'll be putting uh, put in there. Are people in the same club? Oh, it just happened there. I'm I'm marking things that are answered oh. already. Okay, I see what's going on here. I, I was just about, I was reading that and it disappeared. Um, okay, I think we've gone through most of these. We're down to four questions. Are people in the same club put together? And I think Sean just answered that. Um, how do you provide racing history on the athlete's profile? That's in the application, is it not? Yeah, but we're also just, you know, we're looking at race results as well. And when in doubt, drop us an email. Mm -hmm. What 2K are you guys looking for for the top 24? Um, as we said before, you know, we're looking at currently 150 guys and 120 girls. 
that are under 635 and 735. So that gives you an idea of a standard. Um, depending on how far you are off the standard is relative to who else has applied and, and if and when you apply. Um, I just want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, thanks for the coaches for being here with us and taking time out of your night. Thank you to all the families and the parents who joined us. And um, we will look forward to hearing from you and seeing you out on the water. If you have any other questions, please send them along. And this recording will be uh, made available on the website as well. Oh, one more just snuck in. So we got it. Oh, thank you. Well, no, thank you. All right, everybody, take care. Have a great night. And uh, we will see you soon.